Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, this is just the introduction. It'll be on all the videos. I will put a timestamp where you can bypass this. Hope you don't. I hope you watch it at least one time, but if you're cross-watchers, you know, you watch for your moon, your rising, ascending, um, Venus, whatever it is, you can then just go there and it'll click you right towards where you want it to be. Okay. Now, again, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, I will be using my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards for the main reading. I will pull one from my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards, and I will, of course, use my Emily Anderson Crystal Deck. Crystal, yes, crystal deck. Now, for the introduction, we will do an overview with my Weight Rider, Rider Weight tarot cards and my, oh yes, I still have to look, Colleen Barron Reed, The Good Tarot. Okay, now I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate to, for you. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Okay? Have fun with this. Now, Interesting times. Oh, I am, an, I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. My job is just to, you know, just to say whatever comes, in, just comes through. Not even try to think about it, which, you know, that's a little hard to do sometimes. But let it just flow and let it just come out. Okay, so the weekend. Yeah, we've been having a lot of the um, Schumann resonance. We've been having those white spikes. I am not an expert on that. I try to give you what I find so just you know know that but you could also do your own you know looking that up in the um wide internet but i do get the schumann resonance um the that spiky thing the white thing i do take a uh, screenshot of that from the schumann resonance um you know website itself it's in siberia so interesting times um we can all feel the energies moving uh, what are we having? This weekend is going to be one of those other t those other interesting times too, because we have on the second on the second, and remember, it's not a light switch that just goes boop, it's on, and then boop, it's off. It's more of a dimmer switch. So we could be feeling this first through the third, maybe even longer. But on the second, we have Mars, which is in Aries, squaring with Pluto, which is in Capricorn. So when they're squaring, it's kind of like they're egging each other on. There's kind of that uh, frenemy type of thing. You do it. No, you do it. You get in trouble. No, you get in trouble. So Mars and Aries, both, you know, the gods of wars, you know, depending Greek or Roman, um, you know, culture. And then we have Pluto. So that's the war energy. That's the going forth energy. They like to be, you know, Mars likes to be with Aries. Aries likes to be, Mars to be in in that constellation so it's just really very let's go forward let's get this you know let's let's get this done let's make some havoc okay sometimes it's good sometimes who knows it could be a little bit disheartening too anyway then we have pluto in capricorn uh it is retro so it's visiting spots that it has just you know been in and one of the spots it's very very close to it's almost like in that same little sweet spot um remember when i was talking about february 19th and then you know 22nd you know the 222 energies and that was something to do with the uh it was last there for the united states birth chart in 1776 july 4th well it's like there's like it's either like a degree off or it's like a minute off but it's kind of in that same sweet spot so mars in aries pluto in Capricorn, we know Pluto, transformation, destruction, but that things have, you know, tower card type of energy. Things have to be destroyed in order for it to be rebuilt. And I do feel like we're sort of, sort of, kind of, sort of in that rebuilding period, but it's not necessarily easy. So we've got those two kind of, um, you know, going at each other a little bit. So we have that. Put them aside. Now we have Mercury that's in Gemini. It is trining, and that's a very happy, that they work together now. Let's do this. Mercury, communication, also electronics, um, so, but mostly communication. Mercury likes to be in Gemini. Gemini loves Mercury. Very chatty type of energy there. Um, then we have that trining, so it's coming together with Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn, again, these are the things that I've been saying about Saturn, is, you know, 
um, basically it is illusion versus reality. So the weekend could be very interesting. Things could be, you know, more and more, more revelations, more things happening, more coming out. A little bit of that, um, you know, that Pluto and Mars could be, you know, really, you know, like I said, loggerheads with each other. So let's see what we have. So look for an interesting weekend. And if you've been, if you remember what I was talking about, um, you know, the song Aquarius, well, you know, we also have the first and second, we have uh, the moon waxing in Leo. So some strong stuff going on. Let's see now. Let's use our cards and ask higher power, higher power, you know, what's going to happen? What's happening for this weekend? What do we need to be aware of? What are the energies like? And let's see, what are the energies like? Card falling out. When they fall out, it's like they need to come out. Let's go ahead and cut. See what we have. Two more cards. Anything reversed has stronger energies. Um, the court cards, you know, the page, knight, queen, king, they have dual energy. So let's see what we've got going on here for the weekend overview. We, this is the card that fell out. The Fool. Now, this is reversed. So, we have The Fool. Now, this is a lovely card. I love The Fool. Um, you know, there's so much hope. There's just so much um, passion with The Fool. The Fool has been called to go on this journey. The Fool, you know, people are saying, well, you're, that's really foolish of you. But The Fool just says, I'm called. I have, no other, I have no other real choice but to do what I need to do. So, we have a zero. Zero is God source energy. Numbers have meanings. Now, a lot of times numbers can be used for dark energy. We like to use them more for the light energy. So zero is God source energy. The fool, new, new journey, new calling, new, you know, just new. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what's going to be happening with this. I just know that I have to do this. Um, you know, the fool carries this little, you know, carries this flower, carries this little bag, and basically has confidence and just believes, even though the journey may be rough, at this point, the the fool is like, yes, let's just start. So something starting, something changing, something is moving on. And again, there, you know, the fool is on the precipice, and we've all been feeling that type of energy, like, like you know, where are we going? It looks like he's about to um, fall, you know, off. He's just, you know, just kind of just, you know, head in the clouds, or not in the clouds, in the sun, just kind of looking up, not watching even where he's going. But we don't know. We don't know what's below. Maybe it's a step down into another level. Who knows? But that's, a th that's the journey of the fool. We don't know. We just have to trust. We have to have faith. And again, it's saying we're being called to something that we don't even know. You know, we don't know the outcome. We don't know the end. Next card is, okay, now we have another major arcana. We have the devil. The devil is a 15. So it's a 1, 5. Again, the 1 is new beginnings, new start, 10, transitional energy, plus a 5. 5 is all about change. A lot of times it's five, five, five. We've all seen those, you know, those double, triple numbers. Um, you know, change, change, change. Could be positive, could be negative. The thing about this, as we start the new journey, the thing about the devil, the devil is um, a lot of that is being ruled by fear. You know, breaking out. Do we break out? Do we even leave our chains? What are we supposed to do with this? The thing is, when you look at the chains, the chains are loosely bounding. So they, these, these whoever or whatever these are could slip these change and you know chains and move on but is it basically you know rather stay with the devil you know than go on the fool's journey this is a lot of this is facing your fears come coming um coming confronting your you know just coming to face to face your fears the end the thing about this is now you know we don't necessarily want to stay in this in this very um you know this harsh energy here the interesting thing when you look at these people, and you know, there's a feminine and a masculine, is they're no longer human. They're they're no longer fully human. They're being transformed into something else. So the fool is saying, break, you know, is saying, come on, we're being called to something else. The devil basically says, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to do this? You know, wouldn't you rather stay with what you know than maybe try something new or maybe, you know, try a new pathway? 
So this is, a lot of this is the, um, you know, like I said, facing fears. But, um, you know, you've been following me for a while. This comes up periodically. It's, you know, fear is the tool of the devil. It's one of the tools of the devils. A devil. It keeps you from following your journey. It keeps you from moving on to where you need to move on to or where you're being called. It, fear can keep you from your calling. Okay, let's see what this next card is. And there we have it. Again, reversed. Were they all reversed? I think they were. But again, we have that five. Five energy. We have the Hierophant. You know that I'm not necessarily a big fan of the Hierophant. The Hierophant, to some readers, is saying you're coming to your higher calling, that you're being, you know, that you're just, you know, you're just rising above yourself. To me, the Hierophant is the business of religion, the business of government, the ruling of the religion, the ruling of government. Basically, very strict, very structured. So it's kind of like fear. Do we stay with one? Do we go on that new journey? So this weekend does have a lot of that. Um, does have a lot of choices for us. And, you know, it could also be that many of us who follow, many of us who have, you know, you've communicated with me, um, I do believe that, you know, star seeds, um, indigo, crystal children, whatever, you know, whatever time period you came in, and like I say, I'm from the old time period, um, you know, there is, there is some changes. We have some choices to make. Which way are we going to go? Which, what, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the conformity of the Hierophant? Or are we going to choose maybe the freedom or the liberation of the fool? I don't know, but it's interesting energy. And many of us are seeing this. So we have, again, 515, which is 555. We have that 5 energy again, change, change, change. Do we go with the changes um, or do we not? So this is, again, this has very, this is structure. This is very, um, very limitating energy. The Hierophant is very, you know, limitating um, the Hierophant and anything that you want to read about the Hierophant, it's kind of like, well, you can, you know, get with like-minded, you can stay with the what, what you know, or maybe you should try something new. So let's see. Interesting. This is, oh, I don't know, quite know what to tell you about this. These are big, powerful stuff. So let's see what we've got here. Let's see what we've got here now. Let's go on. With the Colleen Baron Reed. I don't know why I have such a hard time with her name, but I want to say it correctly. And let's see. The Good Tarot, Higher Power. What would you like to tell everyone this week, for this weekend, for Friday, Saturday, Sunday? What do we need to know? Here we go. Now, you can also see the pentacle is skewed. So that could be, you know, the pentacles, you know, the pen, the, um, the pen, the sign of the pentacle, pentacles, that is our earth energy, that is our money, job, career. It's also Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo energy, too. So there could be, the, you know, we, we're all having some strange things going on, so it could be money that is being used to keep us in fear. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's see what this is all about. And now, again reversed, we have the five of air. Five of air. Air energy is our Aquarius. I told you we've got stuff going on with Aquarius. Saturn's in Aquarius. It's, it's our Gemini. Mercury is in Gemini also. It is also our Libra energy. Now, it is about our thought processes, hearing news, making plans. A lot of times, the, this is also the Five of Swords. And you know, the Five of Swords always has Sneaky Snake there. Somebody that is not honorable. Somebody that's trying to um, pull one over you. So this one, had, this Five of Air has that, that mental conflict, that mental, um, you know, what am I supposed to do? How am I, what am I, where am I, who am I supposed to trust? What am I supposed to trust? The, you know, the Five of Air is leaves you spinning. The Five of Air... Um, leaves you not knowing which way which way to really go. Do I trust what I believe I know, or do I trust what I know I believe? So it's there's there's some real conflict with this. There's some real conflict. Um, not quite sure where we're going with any of it. I hope that I follow the um, fool's journey. You never know, though. You never know. No judgment with this. 
but there is some mental conflict, there is some mental choices, there is who do I trust, where do I, you know, what do I trust, what am I supposed to, you know, what, where am I supposed to be going? So um, I would say that there is some, uh, going to have some conflicted energies going on, but I do feel I am going to go, because this is the one that fell out, I am going to go with the promise of the fool and say that things will be put on, our, you know, that we will choose the journey. So, interesting, of course, it's always interesting, you know. So let's, let's see, let's see what we have going on with this one. But I, this is just some, this has some really interesting energies right here. And, um, you know, I don't know. Which way do we choose? What do we choose? Okay, I will be starting the videos right after this, but please take a moment to do all that liking, you know, like, 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 go down, like everybody, like it all, um, and that, but like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications, and why don't we start our videos now? Hello, my sweet Scorpios, how are you doing? Oh, I don't know. That just feels like you're just you're just making yourself making things difficult for yourself. You know, it just just there's I don't know, my Scorpio. I just feel like uh you keep throwing blocks in the way and it just keeps you from seeing clearly. So I don't know. Let's see what higher power has to say. What does higher power maybe you're thinking too much. Maybe you know, sometimes think you know, sometimes we have to be more present, more in the you know, in the reality. Sometimes if you're going to be thinking a lot, then ask, ask, ask God, ask your higher power what you need to be thinking about. I just feel like you, um, you just make, I just feel like the weekend, you're making, making things a little more difficult than they need to be. So let's see what we have for my wonderful Scorpios. Here we go. So don't overthink things too much. I don't. One, two, three three cards face down this one is reversed first card is the eight of earth well i like this one i love this one this is a good grounding energy for you this is capricorn though we do have pluto and capricorn this is also um taurus and we do have uranus and taurus so we're a little bit uh a little bit in some transformation energy right there it's also virgo virgo's Virgo's good for you, um, but it, it it is our earth energy. It is our money, our job, our career. It is our home. It's our it's our house energy. Also, the eight has unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. This is really you know, like I said earlier to you, I feel like you make things more difficult than they have to be, and I feel like there's there's this energy wants to provide for you better than you are providing for yourself and you just you know you just want to go you're just kind of in a in a conflict of wanting it more your way than wanting it the way that um higher power wants it to be because the eight of earth is like your you know is thing thing you're being recognized things are working out for you I just don't feel like you want to go that direction. I don't. I just feel that there's this this conflict. There's this this like, well, this is the easy path, and maybe maybe it's too easy for you. Maybe you're being recognized for a lot of your hard work, and you don't think it's as as hard as it is. You know, I I just I just get this conflict with this, and the eight of Earth is kind of like, come on, get down to Earth. Things will work out much better for you. This is, you know, this is recognition. This is you've been doing your job. You've been doing what you need to do. And this is things are going to smooth out for you. I just feel like you're the one that tries to create some, um, I don't know, drama. Okay. Anyway, skilled work is rewarded. Learning all there is to know about a topic. Going back to school. Maybe you don't think you need to learn more. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's where the resistance is. I kind of feel like you're digging your heels, and it's not necessarily where you need to do that. Okay, next card is the Seven of Air. Well, there goes that. Okay, air energy is our Aquarius. Saturn uh, is our Gemini. We have Mercury. It's also Libra. It is our thought process, thinking things through. Seven is um, the divine umbrella, the divine intervention divine interference energy it's a divine number um you know so it's our you know it's it's kind of like things 
you know, just, just when you think you've got your plan, just when you think things are happening the way you need to, things change. Things change. And you need to be receptive. You need to know that, again, I kind of get this thing, stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. Go with that flow. You know, this is a divine, this is a divine change. Things are happening. Plans are, you know, it'll say plans that need revision. Things are going on that you're not in necessarily have the same control. So yes, there's some conflicting energies here. There's this, I want to do it this way. I want to do it my way. And the energies are kind of like, but that's not maybe the best way for you. Okay. So plans that need revision, more going on than meets the eye. Poor timing. But again, that seven is divine interference. So next card, this is reversed. The high priestess. So we have an eight, seven, two. And this was re reversed. This is major arcana, archangel heniel. The high, this is a two. Twos are crossroads, choices. Could be coupling, coming together. Um, but it's, again, I just feel like my Scorpio, why? Stop this, stop this. Uh, just that... You know, you know what you need to do. You know what needs to be done. You know, high priestess tells you to connect with your higher power. Um, you know, you can you you know you can do that. You can connect with God. You can connect. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Um, the high priestess is highly intuitive. The high priestess wants to guide you. You know, especially next to that seven of air. You, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, that feeling that you say, I know I should be doing this. But I want to do this. I just feel like there's this conflict. So, again, this would be a very good time. Maybe this is a good time for you to go into the hermit mode, even though we don't have the hermit here, um, and really, you know, really take some time to connect with your higher power, with God, and ask, where and what am I supposed to do? Because there's some really good positive energies here. Really positive energies. The seven of air, There's this kind of is like, yeah, but it's not maybe the way I wanted it to be. Um, but then the high priestess is connect, connect with higher power, connect with your intuition. Now the high priestess does not, you know, part of it, my Scorpios, is you want to know not just what the next two steps are, you want to know what the next three, four, five steps are. The high priestess will only show you what you need to be shown or what you can handle to be shown. Because if you knew the end of your, of the rope, uh, you know, the end of the uh, line and stuff, you know, it, it, it would be very devastating. It would it would keep you from achieving. So not because it's a negative, it's but it's just kind of like just it just it just would be overwhelming. Okay, so listen to your intuition. Have patience. Consider carefully what you want before acting. So now let's see our John Holland cards. Let's see what we've got here. Clarification. Because this is, you know, I just feel like 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 the the only block is you, my Scorpios, in this. Uh, you know, it's just there because this eight of Earth wants really positive energies for you, money energy, home energy, really good stuff for you. That seven of Air, it's kind of like wants it derails you a little bit. You're like, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, accept the accept the um, change in the plans. How's that? Listen to your intuition too. Uh, let's see what we've got here. But hey, I get it. I get it. Many times it's like, you know, I, I know, okay, I should go do this. And then it's like, nah, but I really want to do this. So it is our natural versus our supernatural. Here we go. And it's our thoughts versus our hearts. So let's see what we've got here. With the John Holland. Higher power. Can you clarify this a little bit for our Scorpios? So we have an 8, 7, and a 2. Let's see. Love begins. Ooh, is this where this is all about? Is this the block? Here we go. So this is the one of cups. So you have an eight, seven, two, and a one. Is this the block? Is there something that, you know, because this is love, this is one of cups. Love begins. Okay, love starts. A new emotional journey. Positive emotional journey. Is this the block? Maybe it is that you don't want to go down that road again. I don't know. Um, but again, I feel that there's this, whatever this is, there's this block and it's keeping you possibly, it's keeping you, I'm not going to say, but it's a new emotional journey. There's the rainbow. Things could work out. Things could be better. I don't know. Just, um, 
interesting uh, interesting maybe you're just maybe you don't feel like you're ready and that's I, that's very understandable you know so what is it that you want and what is it that you know okay let's see let's see what crystal or energy what crystal or energy we have for our scorpios that would be helpful for you let's see but love begins one you know and many times over it's a it's um you know the one of cups um, is a divine love. It's a divine emotional experience. So let's see what we have here. Love rules. Love rules. Here we go. So yeah, may, is that what you're fighting, my Scorpios? Here we go. First, first card, only card, reversed. Aqua Marine. Well, this would be good for you because it's about water healing. That would be good. Compassion. Speaking your truth. Compromise. That's really, really very interesting. Is this what you're fighting? Are you fighting love? I understand. <laughs> anyway, my Scorpios, take a moment. Let me know what this is all about. I'm now, you know, I'm curious about this one. Okay, my Scorpios, take a moment to do the like, the share, the subscribe, the click on the bell, all of that good stuff, because it does help. But most of all, always remember, you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.